As some of you may know, this is my father's KTM Super Duke 1290R. And today we have swapped bikes to make this video. I've made a few videos in the past on this channel with this motorbike and if you want to check those out I'll link them up in the top corner but for this video to make sense you have to understand the history of this exhaust pipe and another thing about this pipe it's the reason I might be talking too loud he's had this bike two years now and when he got it it had a completely stock exhaust system on it and obviously nobody really likes a stock exhaust especially not on a bike like a Super Duke so one of the first things he did was get a link pipe which basically deletes the cat saves five kilos and makes it quite a bit louder but he kept the stock canister so like that it was a much better volume and a lot more fun to ride and because he'd only got rid of the cat and kept the stock silencer it even fixed itself it didn't need to be put on the dyno it ran beautifully but as we all know too well we don't stay content with any parts on our bikes for very long and that is when this happened this is a custom race tech exhaust it's titanium it got rid of the link pipe we had it's all one piece now beautifully welded it's got laser printed 1290 on it and it is insanely loud. So they don't come much better than that but unfortunately it came with its own set of problems. Suddenly it wasn't running so nice. It was struggling to find the idle, constantly hunting for it. So the obvious fix seemed to be to get one of these, a Power Commander 5. So basically this plugs into your bike's stock connections and you can load custom maps to help it run better. You can plug it into your laptop with a micro USB and download and load whatever maps you want onto your bike. So currently I think it is running a full system arrow exhaust map, maybe an Austin Racing, I'm not too sure. We've tried a few and this one seems to be the best so far. There is another module that Dynojet made called the Autotune, which plugs into your O2 sensors and then can read the fuel to air mixture in your exhaust and adjust it on the fly. So currently these aren't even plugged into anything. It's running the map we loaded and it's not taking these into account at all. So even though it is running a hell of a lot better and it is huge fun, it's definitely rideable, but I don't think it is perfect just yet. It still backfires quite a lot. So this week we're gonna put it on the dyno. We're gonna take it to Dyno by Quint. He has agreed to let us make a video of him dyno tuning this bike. And hopefully after that, it'll run perfectly and we get to see how much power it'll make and whether the map that's on it was actually close at all. Okay, so let's take it to Dyno by Quint and see what he can do with it. I don't think any microphone in the world can do this bike justice just how loud it really is especially when it's cold it's cold start the way it wakes up in the morning it's literally that first fire is just a huge bang it's brilliant and the whole morning that I've been riding this bike I've just been giggling because it's so much fun Wake up everyone in this part of town. You'll almost feel guilty because it's so loud. Almost. And at the moment the back tire on this thing is as square as can be and pretty much bald. So when you roll on, it's like an ice rink. It has zero traction and when you turn in, it falls off a cliff. Doesn't change how much fun it is. <laughs> Another thing, since it got this silence on it, I believe the fuel consumption has also gone through the roof. That's understandable. When you start it, you can just smell it now, which it never used to be quite that bad. So we are heading to Dano by Quint here in Edenvale, South Africa. He's pretty well known for his work on the Dino, especially with Kawasaki H2s and Hayabusa. He also does really cool builds. This is the famous Donald Twin. Let's go see what he has to say.
is just ridiculously loud. He's got headphones, there's acoustic foams all over the walls, so from the front of the shop you can hardly hear it. It sounds like a regular bike, but when it's running, when it's close to red line on the dyno, it's just insane. You can't help but block your ears because it physically hurts. I have no clue what he's fiddling with because it seems like it's just started and I was reading. It started at 52 horsepower, now it's up to 130 something. So I'm guessing he's tinkering with it. I know that this beast isn't making only 50 horsepower. It should be closer to 180 there or thereabouts. to be up to 170, 173.7 horsepower at 10,000 RPM and 137 Newton meters of torque. That's pretty impressive. We got a big fan trying to keep it cool, trying to blow the Super Duke away. The fans aren't on on the radiator yet, so it must be doing its job. I drop it was at 173 now he's done two more runs the previous one was 174 now 175 it looks like he's in the dyno jet software they're altering the values and this is what you need to be able to change those values correctly he's got his o2 sensor down the pipe so that's measuring the air to fuel mix or whatever it wants to know so that he's got accurate feedback to change the data on his computer so the maps that you download are pretty good and they're very close, but they're not designed to your exact bike or your exact setup. So where you've got information like this, you can change it to your exact bike, especially like him where he knows what he's doing. We would just change numbers to what looks cool on a chart. Okay, so that was pretty much it for what went on on the dyno. And once he was finished with that, he told me a little bit about what he was doing. Unfortunately, I didn't film it, but I'll try and share that with you now. So to tune the beast, he did end up using the power commander. At the beginning of this video, I told you about another dyno jet module called the auto tune, and that is what he used. That he plugged into this, and that was plugged into a lambda sensor that he put down the exhaust. So as it was running, the lambda sensor picked up the gases in there and adjusted it on the fly to be tuned accurately. So then the map that he creates with the auto tune is saved onto the power commander. So instead of it adjusting constantly, he creates a map that will work all throughout and loads it onto this. So he explained that to me, he explained how he did it, and then he showed me the map side by side. The arrow fill system exhaust map that we had loaded onto the dyno jet, and then the custom map that he had created. And it was very interesting to see the values side by side. Basically, it's a table, a chart with a million numerical values in it which indicate how much fuel is being added at that specific time. So when we originally put the Dynajet onto the bike we looked at the stock KTM Super Duke map and the Arrow one and what interested us and confused us was that some of the values went into the negative which seems the wrong way around because you're giving it an exhaust pipe which theoretically is getting more air through the engine so wouldn't you need more fuel and that is exactly what the new map suggests that yes we did need more fuel so it was actually starving the engine of fuel so now a lot of those values that were very high negatives are either very low negatives or the opposite in positives so for example some went from minus 11 to positive 11 11. and I don't know how big of a difference that really is but it sounds pretty drastic the main objective with a lot of dyno runs is horsepower 
or torque and you'll notice in this case from our base run to our final run we only went up about 7 horsepower it was at around 175 but he ended up adding more fuel which brought the horsepower down but the main thing is that it's running fine there was never a lack of power it's still huge fun and you're probably wondering how does it feel now does it feel better does it feel more powerful and to be honest I can't really tell. It's not my daily bike. I don't know what it used to feel like in all conditions. I would say it was a little bit smoother, maybe more responsive. I would say a little bit less engine braking, but I could be making it all up because I don't know this as well as I know the R6. But the main thing really is that now it is running right. Now we know that we're not damaging the engine, starving it of fuel or anything like that. But anyway, that is pretty much it for this video and I hope that you guys enjoyed it because I had so much fun making it. I learned quite a bit and it's something that really interests me. I'm really looking forward to putting this one out. So I'd like to say thank you to Dino by Quint for letting us film the process and teaching me something about dyno tuning. And if you are in the Edenvale area, check him out if you want to get your bike dyno tuned. He is very good at what he does. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button and I'll catch you in the next video.